Welcome back to another episode of Karsten's Aquatics. Today, we are at my buddy Jake's house. If you're an OG to the channel, you remember when we set up this turtle tank. However, it is looking a little different now. You can see much more room for the turtle and fish to swim around. There used to be like a big stack of rocks right here, but he switched to a floating dock which was probably a good move. A lot of you guys have been asking about George, the pink belly side neck, there he is. He's doing great. And seeing him is really making me want a pink belly side neck of my own. Let's see, if we get 1,000 likes in the first week of this video being uploaded, I will go get a pink belly side neck of my own. 1,000 likes, it's gonna be hard, let's get there. But yeah, George is doing good, but this video is not about him. This video is about this tank right here. This is a 10 gallon tank. Right now it's home to six neon tetras, but Jake wants to make a switch to one leopard puffer. So we're gonna have to transform this tank into brackish water, which basically means almost fresh water, but with a little bit of salt. It's really not that much of a change. So we're gonna rehome these neon tetras to one of my tanks and we're gonna set up this tank for a puffer fish. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is siphon out some of the water into this bucket. We're gonna get that to like maybe right here. Then we're gonna scoop out all the tetras, put them in here, and uh, whenever we go to get the puffer, we'll just drop them off at my house. So let's do that first. All right, there we go. All right, so we got our water in the bucket. Now we're gonna go ahead and scoop out all the neon tetras. Oh, got two of them, boom. That is a professional job right there. All right, so all the tetras are out. So now what we're doing is filling up a different bucket with tank water. When this is full, we're gonna get that to the right salinity. This is the salt we're gonna be using. Again, it's just brackish water, so we don't need to use that much of this. We'll talk about the salinity and stuff when we get to it. So we're gonna have five gallons of used tank water, because that's already good cycled water. And then we're gonna fill up another bucket with new water, and we'll get both of those to the right salinity. We'll fill up the tank. Again, we'll double check everything just to make sure the water's correct. We are gonna move this tank into the basement, so we'll do all the moving whenever it's empty. So yeah, we'll let you know whenever this bucket's full. All right, so we have the tank completely drained into those two buckets. We're now gonna move the piece of furniture it was on down into the basement. All right, so we're now gonna bring the tank and the water down to the basement as well. It's like it just pops open. That would be really bad. <laughs> All right, so we got the tank right there. That's where it's gonna go. We got our water right here. I brought over my hydrometer. I got this for when I set up my own saltwater tank. So we're just gonna be using this, brand new. About to bust it out of the box. So like I mentioned, we are making brackish water, which means we use a little bit of this marine salt. We wanna get this salinity to about 1.010. At the pet store that we're getting this puffer fish, they said that is the salinity they keep the puffer fish at. On the box, it said use a half cup for each gallon of water. But that is saying that gets the salinity to 1.22. So we're gonna go slightly under half of this portion, if that makes sense. So we're not gonna do a half cup per gallon, we're gonna do a quarter cup per gallon, approximately. <laughs> <laughs> the plop that makes me Alright, so we got all of our salt in there. Now we're gonna use a wooden spoon to mix it. <laughs> what a lot of people in the saltwater hobby do is get like a pump or a power head and put it in there so it'll just like automatically stir it. We don't got that, so we're just going with the old wooden spoon technique. So uh, we'll get back to you in a second. Alright, so we've been mixing for a while. We're now gonna bust out the hydrometer and check the salinity on this bad boy. There it is. Never used one of these before. Total freshwater guy over here. But hey, soon that's gonna be changing. There it is. So basically, I'm going to put this whole thing in here. Let that fill up. All right, there we go. Then we set this on a flat surface and it looks like our salinity is a bit high. It should be about right here. So what we can do to fix that is just add complete fresh water to this bucket. You know what, let's just add some of this to it. So we'll just mix that up for a bit longer and then we'll retest it in a little bit. All right, this should be good now. We're just about there. Plus also, there's already some fresh water left in this tank. So when we put this in there, it'll equal out. All right, so we're gonna dump our first bucket of brackish water into the tank. And there we go. So we're filling up this bucket the rest of the way with clean water. We're gonna add water conditioner, obviously. Then we're gonna add in the salt, get it up to the right salinity level, and add it to the tank. So we're adding in the salt to the new water. 
Alrighty, then we whip it up, and I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Alright, so we got this new bucket to about 1.008 salinity. That is a bit low, but we're going to put it in the tank and kind of see the total, and then we'll add if we need to. There we go, the tank is full. We're not going to let the filters run for a little bit, then we will test the salinity of the whole tank. Alright, so we've been letting the tank run for a little bit, and now we're going to test the salinity in the tank, just to make sure it's perfect for the puffer fish. And it looks just a tad low, so we might add like a quarter of a cup of salt in there, let that go for a little bit, check it again, and then we should be good. So we got just a little bit more salt, we're going to add it to the tank, just to bump that salinity up to where we want it. Just going to sprinkle that in, and having the filter running, that'll automatically stir it for us, it'll dissolve on its own. Also one thing I forgot to mention, these plants are java ferns. This species of plant does really well in brackish water because they're originally from like jungle swamps. So if you're doing a setup a brackish water tank and have live plants, just do a little bit of research first to find out what kind of plants do well in brackish water. So we're now going to head out. We're going to drop those neon tetras off at my house and we're going to get the puffer fish for this tank. This tank is going to have probably like 30 to 45 minutes at least to run until we get back. So it should be a-okay by the time we get back. And I'll see you at the pet store. Alright guys, so we are now back from the store. We got our puffer. There he is. We got the biggest one there was, and you'll get a better look at him in the tank. Real quick, we are going to double check the salinity just to make sure it's perfect. Yep. Alright, so we got our puffer fish right here. Like I mentioned before, this is brackish water, so we're going to do a different acclimation technique called drip acclimation. Basically, I'm going to use this airline tubing as a siphon, and then we're going to tie this end in a knot and it's just gonna slowly drip into the pufferfish's bag and that'll slowly adjust it not only to the temperature but also to the like salinity and other water parameters. So let's get started. Let's put that in there and <laughs> give this a suck. So yeah, this is spraying out. I'm gonna tie this in a knot, like slow it down. Now you can see it's just dripping. So we'll put that in the bag and we'll give that, I don't know, like 15 minutes and then he should be ready to go. All right, so this thing has been dripping for about 15 to 20 minutes. You can see there, that's about the pace it should be coming out. So we should be good to go. We're now gonna scoop our little puffer fish out of here, put them in the tank. Here we go. Oh, he looks so good in there. It's so dope. Yeah. <laughs> Get him go. Alrighty, so right here we have frozen clams, half shell clams. This is what he will eat. With puffer fish, you need to feed them something hard like a crustacean or something of that sort because these fish actually have beaks and you need to keep those beaks kind of whittled down so they don't overgrow. So clams are great for that. This is what most people feed their puffer fish. And he has only been in here for like five or 10 minutes. We are gonna drop one of these in to see if he'll go for it. Uh, I'm not sure if he will, but he was just biting at a plant. So <laughs> I guess he's hungry. Oh, it's nasty. There it is. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, well, he doesn't seem too, too interested in the clam quite yet. He is still just exploring. This is a completely new tank. He's now completely alone instead of <laughs> having all his homies. So we're just gonna give him some time. It's probably gonna take a little bit for him to start eating. And you know how we do it. Drop some names for this guy. And if me and Jake choose your name, you'll get a shout out in the next video. And that is gonna wrap up this video. Today's comment of the day goes out to Callan Russell. Your channel is growing so fast. Keep up the great vids. Thank you, I appreciate that. And if you want your comment to be the comments of the day in the next video, all you gotta do is drop a comment down below and that could happen. And if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and I'm gonna see you in the next video.